Hi. Uh, it's kind of, it's been a while. Remember me? I bet you guys have been wondering where, where have, where has James been? It feels like I haven't made a video in years. And I, I got a good reason. Well, I mean, I got a reason. I don't, I don't know if it's a good one. Let me, let me explain. So you remember in the last video where I was showing you a fan design that I was printing out for the fan showdown and I was talking about how I thought it was cool and whatnot and I wanted to test it and stuff. Well, I got overly invested in this design. I'm just gonna be honest. I've extrapolated this out. Now this fan was called the pump. It was essentially a load pump. Kind of think like supercharger, even like a water pump kind of thing. But the idea for this was to produce a fan or to make a fan that produced an exceptionally high static pressure to kind of win the, the fan shot on this season. And the idea for this thing was, or the pump really, was to turn an A12X25 into a load pump. And I thought it was cool. Now, I'll be honest, when I saw the screenshots of what this thing was gonna look like when it was done printing, I knew that it had about a 1% chance, if, if that, of actually working. Mostly because the, the A12X25 has pretty much zero torque, and I knew that getting this thing to turn, you know, getting the A12X25 to turn like a gear train and these loads was pretty much impossible. Also, there was the issue that the rotors were only supported on one side with a single bearing, which is not ideal, and it, they, they tended to wanna, you know, they tend to wanna bind up but I still wanted to try. I wanted, I wanted to believe. You just blew my mind. Well, after getting it all printed out and put together and tested, it didn't work. But what if it, what if it did? What if it would have worked? How good would it be? How bad would it be? Would it, would it, you know, outperform the wonder from down under, the thing that's like crushing the leaderboard right now in the fan show, and especially this season? I just was, I just wanted, I just had to know. And that's kind of when I became invested in this design. And I was like, well, if this doesn't work, I want to make one that, kind of simulates what this design would have done if it had worked. That's kind of where we are and that's kind of where I've been. So I guess this fan showdown is kind of a, a new, a new, we never really had a fan showdown episode like this because it's not really, it's not a real fan showdown because we won't be testing the design that was actually sent to me, but we'll be testing a remix where I thought the design was cool, we didn't even know it didn't work. I kind of spent some time at remixing it to make it into something that would work. And I've kind of, I've made something like this in the past, it's still up there, uh, it was that supercharger fan which kind of worked the same as a Roots supercharger. I powered that one with an RC brushless motor, <clears throat> and I thought about just using that one and testing it and kind of see how it would work, but it's obvious that that would kind of crush everything that we have in the season, be not because it was like a super awesome design, but because it used an RC motor to spin the, spin the lobes and it spun really, really fast. It was super noisy and it pushed a lot of air. But it wouldn't be comparable to what this thing would have done if it had an A12X25 that would have spun it. So I wanted to make something, you know, more apples to apples. I need this thing to spin somewhere around 1,000 RPM. So the A12X25 spins at 2,000 RPMs, and when you get all the gear train loss, it would never be 2,000. Uh, we see it all the time, you know, the A12X25 in a stock form does spin the fan disc at 2,000 RPMs, but when we change it, sometimes the RPMs go up or go down based on the load pressed or the load put on the, uh, the A12X25. So I was shooting for something, you know, I wanted to start at 2,000 and I was hoping to get somewhere around 1,000, hopefully a little more to make it somewhat comparable to what we might've seen. And that was, that was the whole idea. And that's kind of what you see on the table. Obviously this is what I printed for uh, Jagnaz, Jagnaz, Jag, we'll just call him Jag. His name was J-A-G-N-S-D. He's nope. the one that made this design. Um, it didn't work, but it was cool enough for me to try it, and that is what is on the table, all these, all these pieces and parts. Now the overall design of the fan, so this is a new case that we're gonna be using. The overall design or the size of the fan case is the same, you know, depth, width, height. The lobes themselves are similar in size. They're exact, pretty much the exact same size. I did make some changes that we'll talk about here. First one being on the front cover, I guess you could call it. I added windows. The windows really have no purpose other than well, you know, you know why we, you know why we put windows. Uh, to make these, it was pretty straightforward. I, well, I just drew them up and then I made a template of the, the windows that I needed to fit into the, the cover. And I just traced that onto some 1 8 inch acrylic and just use a Dremel to cut it out. Now the edges are pretty rough, but the way I'm gonna put them in here, they're gonna snap onto the inside and they kinda got a border to make it look a little cleaner. And we'll probably use some, I don't know, hot glue around the edges just to make sure we seal it up. And then obviously we needed to tackle the power plant because the A12X95 was out. Uh, I have the T30, which is a little bit stronger of a fan, but obviously still PC fans aren't really known for their, their torque. There's actually a server fan back there too, but that wouldn't work either. And I didn't want to go RC motor because 
then I'd have to gear it down a whole bunch. But what I did have sitting around was uh, this little geared fan. Now this fan spins at 1000 RPM, which is just short of our 2000 RPM goal, but it is geared, so it's gonna have a bit more torque and we can gear it up to get to the initial speed of 2000 and then cross our fingers and hope that the lobes are somewhere over 1000. Uh, for the gear train, pretty simple. Uh, we have the drive gear for the motor itself and then we just have a one to two gear ratio. So every time the motor spins once, it will spin the, the, the lobe gears uh, twice. And then we talked about the other issue we had. These uh, original lobes were only supported on the one side, which makes them a little, you know, wiggly. So to counter that, I, I did put the same exact bearings that were called out on the original design on both the case and the cover to support it on both sides. Now you will notice that I did remove the, uh, the shields of the bearings and I have removed the factory grease from the bearings. And I know what you're thinking. I took a lot of heat for this last time I did it. But the idea here is that the grease that comes in these bearings from the factory is pretty thick. It's real viscous and it makes the bearings tougher to spin. Now, if you were to use these bearings as they are intended, that grease will help improve their lifespan. But that's not what we're doing. What we're shooting for here is getting the bearings to spin as easily as possible so we can hopefully get as many RPMs as we can possibly get. Because again, we're shooting for something over a thousand. I did also modify the lobes. You'll see, you can easily see on this yellow one yellow, pink one, there is a blue cover. I printed these hollow and then I capped them off just to make them, you can't see how, this one's heavier, but it, it'll be lighter. I also did spray a little bit of uh, Teflon oil in there. So there just is just a, the tiniest amount of oil to hopefully give us as smooth as operation as possible. This also has a spline on the inside. Rather than print it as one piece, I did put a, a little spline that slides in there. The only reason I did that really is just make it easier to print because I can print that straight on its face this as well and then when it's done this slides in there and then that seats into the cover bearing what else did i do uh i made a velocity stack for the top mostly because i think it will just help smooth out the airflow going into uh, the case i put some i don't know stator veins you could call them veins in the in the velocity stack i don't know if that's really going to help the idea this is more of seat of the pants idea here is i i figured it would help reduce the turbulence going into the pump and maybe make it function better. We can always remove this to see if it improves operation. We could actually just break these off too and see if it helps or hurts. This is just a simple adapter to go from this case to the, uh, the test that we're going to use, the test bench that we've been using for the fan shutdown. And then we got a bunch of TPU gaskets just to seal up, you know, the, the cover, the intake, the, the adapter, just make everything as sealed as possible so we get the, hopefully the best performance we can possibly get. We're shooting to beat the, the Wonder from Down Under, which I think, what, what did it get? I think eight millimeters of H2O in our last fan showdown. All right, so step one would be installing the motor. As you can see, I've already done that because uh, it's finicky. This is a horrible design choice. This should have been separate from the case, but that's here nor there. Uh, step two will be installing the drive gear. Now you can see there's a flat on this gear and that just aligns with the shaft of the motor. It's pretty straightforward. Push it on, prop it. As long as I can see what I'm doing. And we are. The lobes go in pretty straightforward right through the bearings like so. Aligning them is the, the finicky tricky part. To make my life a little easier, you can see that there are, well, there's only one way that the gears can go on. And as long as they are meshed and aligned with the witness marks on the cage and the gears, the lobe should be in the correct place to spin, spin freely, uh, so I'll do that. So that's done, and it didn't take an annoyingly a long amount of time off camera, but as you can see, everything spins freely. This thing, well, this gear, basically, this is our, this is our gear reduction or gear addition. What, what am I? This is the gear ratio that we're going with. The motor gear drives this gear, which drives the main gears, and as you can see, they're aligned. They all spin freely. Now to make them align properly and not wiggle wobble all over the place, uh, these little spline axle dealios, proper name, slide in just like so. And the cover will go over that with the gasket in between. I did print these spacers though, because the gasket was kind of an afterthought and this kind of takes up the extra space between the cover with the gasket on there. So there's not a lot of play. You, you get it. Ta-da. Hopefully our Insta gasket around our windows won't be too tall. They'll hit our rotors. If it is, we'll figure that out when we get there. Gasket goes over this. And then this goes over that. Okay, it's coming together. Not gonna lie, it looks, pretty, it looks actually kind of cool. 
it might not do that good as a, a fan, but as like a visual representation of what a root supercharger kind of looks like. I think we nailed it. Well, I didn't nail it. Jag nailed it. I'm not really sure which side is gonna be intake and which side is gonna be exhaust. So I guess we'll, we'll turn it on first and if it spins, we'll see which side needs to be which. So the benefit of using this cheap little motor is that it runs on 12 volts, which means I can use this a standard PC power supply. This is positive and this is negative. Let's see, Let's see what happens. Oh no. Absolutely nothing. Perfect. Try again. Oh, okay. I guess I was I wasn't clipped onto the negative. Hey, we spun. It was it was kind of loud. Correction, it's very loud. Where's where's my little laser's tack? All right, moment of truth. I've put a target on the lobe gear and hopefully this will be Around a thousand. Wow, I'm going deaf. It's about 1400, which is actually better than I thought it would be. So that is, that's pretty nice. Let's see which side's the intake and exhaust. So this is our exhaust, which works out great because that's the bottom. So this will go on this side and our intake cone will go on this side. So there it is in all of its glory. Everything attached. Spin it about as free as it can. So I think you know what time it is. So yeah, that was that was kind of a disappointment. You couldn't really you couldn't really see much as the smoke went in. It dissipated a lot. Yeah, it wasn't as cool as I thought it would be. Hopefully this will be a little better. As you can see, I got the A12X25 on there now. We're just gonna do a little sanity check, make sure this is still giving us accurate readings. Last time I ran this fan, I got 2.4 millimeters of H2O, so we're just gonna make sure that's what it's still giving before we put the old pump on there. See where we end up here. Two point, there it is, 2.4. All right, here's the hoping. Remember, eight is the number we're trying to beat. Whoa. Whoa, that was a little better than I thought. For a little plastic supercharge. Let's see if it, it seems like it peaks and kind of bleeds off. <laughs> noise huh huh I'm, I'm pretty i'm pretty pleased with that i i didn't think it would do that good now the smoke test yeah, that was that was a bit of a miss but this thing performed a lot better than i they thought it would i thought we would beat the wonder from down under but when i only saw we were we were only getting like 1400 rpm i thought maybe maybe we just squeak by but kind of crushed it with 14. I'd be interested to know what, what you guys thought. Did you even think this was gonna work? We can see that if Jag was able to use a motor like this, uh, he could have achieved some, some greatness. He was limited, like all of us are, to using the A12X25. So getting this to work was always gonna be tough, but I'm glad that I decided to pull it out of the stack and kind of see what potential was in there. Cause it shows us there is still room left on the board for somebody to take down the wonder from down under it just takes a little creativity and I hope this inspires you i thank you jag for sending this over and inspiring me to get in there and design something that kind of looks pretty cool and functions a lot better than i thought it's a little loud but in the end i really enjoyed it and if you want to get in on the fan show on the actual series that we run on the channel make sure to uh, go to my Thingiverse account where you can find models and kind of guides on what you need to basically what dimensions you need to hit to make sure your fan fits on the A12X25. If you have any ideas what you want me to do with this thing, because it is a lot cooler than I thought it would be, let me know in the comments down below. And as always, I hope this inspires you again to get out there and try to design something for the fan show. And even if you don't think it's gonna work, but you think it's a cool idea, submit it to me, because if I see it, 
I might think it's cool enough that we might just do a little remix like this. And I hope you had fun. I, I sure did. I'll hopefully see you a lot sooner next time.